Welcome back to another video from Coding with Z. Today I'm going to be looking at SQL Kata. It's a query builder. Um, I find that ORMs are good in situations where the tables obviously exist ahead of time, meaning that you can code against them. But sometimes your code is a little bit more dynamic, and so you don't know necessarily what you need to start building and writing to you until the time that things are being run. And so this is where I think a query builder kind of comes in handy because it still keeps you abstracted away from the base database system, whether that be Microsoft SQL Server, or Postgres, etc. cetera. Um, so you're writing in a way that the provider controls the output of the SQL that gets generated. So if we switch over and start looking at the website, it just defines it as a fluent SQL query builder for C-sharp. Uh, this is a good site to start off with, obviously. Uh, it kind of walks you through what this thing is, kind of how it works. And then obviously you'd want to jump into the documentation to look at very specific examples of the things that you'll want to be doing uh, with your query building. All right, so let's get started with the fun stuff. So need to start off and get us a project going, right? So let's just make a directory, SQL Kata. We will cd into SQL Kata. And then let's do a .NET new console. And I'm going to throw on the flag, use program main, because I don't like those top level statements. It's just personal preference. And let's just make sure it will build. If I can type, there we go. Looks good. Obviously, if I do a .NET run, I should get a hello world, and I do. So let's go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code here. You can see we've got what you would expect in a new console application with just a main method. Um, nothing, nothing special there. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and add in our packages we're going to be using for this project. And there's going to be three. We're going to be doing the SQL client. Let's go ahead and pop that in there. Because we're going to, in this situation, we're going, or the, for this demo, we're going to be looking at Microsoft SQL Server. So that's really we need that one. We're going to bring in the SQL Kata.NET 6 execution package. This is a wrapper around Dapper. Um, and so if you don't want to do the execution this way, if you want to do the execution of your queries a different way, you, don't, you can just bring in the SQL Kata.NET 6 and then it'll generate your SQL and then you can use those SQL statements and some other method. But for simplicity of this demo, we're going to be using the SQL Kata wrapper around Dapper uh, to get our results back from our database. So let's get that added. And... For this demo, I'm going to bring in Newtonsoft's JSON package just to do some serialization because when we do the execution, we're going to get back a dynamic object. And so I want to serialize that object into a JSON string so I can display it in the console. So that's what that's going to be for. All right. So now let's do a .NET run just to make sure everything is still building. Yep, everything looks good. And if we pop over here to our SQL Kata, you can see here's our packages uh, that have been added through our command line. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create a database for this thing, right? So let's jump over here to this, and I am going to, this, I'm SSH'd into another machine. I'm going to stand up a Docker container uh, for this demo, and nothing special here, I'm just standing up a Docker container with Microsoft SQL Server and setting obviously the ports, passwords, etc. Looks like that's done. Let's just see if it's running. Looks like it's running. All right, so let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and let's try connecting into this Ubuntu server through that port. Make sure I get the password right and here we are. Of course, I connected to that. That's not what I want to do. 
I want to connect to this. And I can't type the password. YouTube. All right. So here we've got a new SQL Server instance with no databases. So let's go ahead and create a database for our use case here. And so I'm going to just create a new database. We're just going to call it YouTube. That way it's easy. And now if we drill down into here, we're going to need a new table so we can query some data and create some data. So let's just do ID, identity. Let's go ahead and set this as identity column. I'm going to do a name column, just do a name Vartar, that's fine. And why not do a crazy that and just do a date time. Okay. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll save this as a sample table. That way it's very generic. Okay. Let's do a refresh. And now we've got sample table. Let's go ahead and add at least one record to this thing. Um, so let's do uh, SQL Kata, and we'll just do today's date. That's fine. So now we've got a record in the in the table that we can query. Let's go back to our code and let's start writing some code. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create our connection. So we're going to do using var connection equals uh, new SQL connection. And I'm just going to copy and paste this connection string in here. And there we go. SQL connection is not found. So let's add the using statement there with our handy dandy control dot. Uh, we're going to bring in a thing from SQL Kata called the SQL Server Compiler. So we'll call it Compiler SQL Server Compiler. And let's go ahead and bring in that using statement. And now we need um, a database context essentially. So we'll do a new query factory. And we'll pass in our connection and our compiler. And let's go ahead and bring in that using statement. All right, so now we're getting close to, to being able to use this thing, which is nice, like it's really fast with the setup. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So I am going to, I know I just created that record with ID of one, so let's just do var ID filter equals one. Okay. Um, and so we're going to want to pull back records from our query. So let's do var records equal db query. And here we can specify the table name. And so that's sample table. And now we can specify a where statement or a where clause. We're going to hit our ID column using the ID filter. And not that we need this, but just, just so you can see it, uh, we'll do a limit of 100 records. And now we'll do get. And like I said, this comes back as a dynamic type. And so you can specify a type so that it'll get uh, cast into that. And we'll create that type here in just a second. And I'm just going to go do a to list. You don't have to do this. This is just what I'm doing. You can leave it as an enumeration if you want. And so I'm going to jump down here and I'm going to create a public class for our sample object. Um, and I'm going to just add a couple of, of the items here. So we're going to do the ID field. And we'll do the name field. And I don't think I have to do this, but we'll do it anyway. Why not? All right. So 
So now that's that's okay. So the next thing we do want to do is loop through our responses. So let's just do a for each. Um, so for each record in our records, which we're only going to get one because we're filtering by ID, but just kind of continuing on this path. JSON convert dot serialize object. We're going to pass in our record. And let's go ahead and bring in the fusing statement. That way we can possibly get some autocomplete, maybe. We're not. All right. Um, so Newton soft dot JSON dot formatting dot indented just to make it nice and pretty. And then we'll just write this out to the console. Okay. Uh, we've got all our using statements. That all looks good. So let's just see. Let's do a dot net build. Are we all good? Should be. Okay. And let's do a dot net run. All right, so you can see here we ran it and we got back our record out of our database. So if we, well, if we want to insert a record, right, during this process, um, let's do that. Let's change, let's go up here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just do affected equal to db.query. Pass in the table name, again, sample table. And dot insert a new, create us an object here, name, another record, and we'll do create it at time UTC all right and let's just forget about querying with anything here we'll just get everything back from the sample data just to make sure we do get our results so let's do this bring this back up here dot net run And that didn't work. Why did that not work? Hmm. All right, so we've got a typo here. Invalid column name makes sense because so, we did create it at. So let me clear this, do run again. And there we are. We've got our other record. And so obviously I could keep doing this, but it's just duplicating the name at that point. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the way that you can use this SQL Kata. If you do have need to dynamically generate your queries at runtime. I think this is a good way to go. Um, so yeah, if you like the project, uh, please go out and to GitHub and star the projects just so it, it gets a little bit of credit for the creator that spent the time of you know building this thing. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, definitely like it. Let me know that I need to keep on creating content. Um, if you don't like it, then let me know why. Appreciate it.